And I want you to turn with me now, please, as I bring this meeting to a close, to Psalm number 90, the 90th Psalm. And please do remember the hymns by the sea that's taking place immediately after our service. Here tonight we're heading down to the esplanade immediately once we're finished. Now, nine, Psalm number 90, please. And the Lord wants to talk to us from this psalm. Now, Psalm 90, verse 10. The 90th Psalm and verse 10. Now, this is what the Bible says, and this is what the Word of God says tonight. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And we know that the Lord will bless that reading of His own precious truth. For the closing moments of this service tonight, friends, God wants us to consider something that's vitally important. Now, there are many vital things tonight God would have us all to consider tonight. God would want you most of all tonight, friends, to consider your soul. Because if you were to die, friend, tonight unsaved, remember your soul is not prepared to meet God. But this is what God wants us to consider tonight as we bring this meeting to a close. God wants us to consider tonight a wise prayer for sinners to pray. A wise prayer for sinners to pray. Mind you, I know the unsaved tonight. Boys, I know the unconverted tonight. Man, they believe in prayer. It's not the first unsaved person has come to me and says, George, will you pray for my wee granny? She's not well. George, will you come and will you pray with my child? The unsaved tonight, they believe in prayer. Sure, you believe in prayer, love, don't you? Because I know a lot of unsaved people, and mind you, they wouldn't get into their bed at night without kneeling at the bedside and praying. But God wants to speak to us tonight about a wise prayer, a wise prayer for sinners to pray. It's found in Psalm 90. And it's found down there at verse 12. Now listen to what it says. So teach us to number our days that we might apply our hearts unto wisdom. Wonder if you ever prayed that prayer, sir. Lord, teach me to number my days, that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. Tracy and I were just walking through Knocknamuckley Churchyard one evening this week. We come to a headstone where two brothers lay buried. The first brother, he died at the age of 20. And the second brother, he died six weeks later. He was 21. 
two coffins out of the one home. Within a month, or a little over a month. I could take you to a graveyard tonight in my own hometown of Achnacloy, and down at the foot of the graveyard, for our graveyard's on a slopey hill, and down at the foot of that graveyard, there's another grave. There's a young lassie that I used to go to school with, and she had to watch two coffins carried for, for, through from her home in one day. Her husband, 32 years of age, and that of her son of 11 and a half. And on the Sunday, the following Sunday of the same week, she had to watch a third coffin go out of the home. That of her wee lassie just of two and a half. Three coffins out of the one home in the one week. I and we all know who we're talking about when I say this tonight. In Ballin the Hinch there's a grave where there was three coffins took out of the one home on the one day. And I'll tell you, friends, headstones like that make very sad and very solemn reading. Headstones like that tonight cry out to our hearts, so teach us to number our days. The psalm tells us tonight, the psalm tells us the days of our years are threescore years and ten. That's what the Bible says, but the Bible doesn't guarantee we'll see the threescore years and ten. That's why the psalmist prays, so teach us to number our days, to ply our hearts on the wisdom. It's a wise prayer for sinners to pray. Because that prayer brings before us tonight the certainty of life. Do you know what the certainty of life is? It's found in, it's found in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. Do you know what Hebrews 9 verse 27 says? Now, this is the certainty of life. It says there, it is appointed unto men once to die. Now, what does that tell me concerning the certainty of life? That tells me that we're all certain we're not here forever. That tells me the certainty that our life someday in some way was going, is going to come to an end. And I can tell you, friend, tonight, it's a wise thing to pray tonight. So teach me the number of my days. Because I'll tell you something now, love. You're not here forever, and I'll tell you there's none of us here for long. So many people today they live life as if they're never going to die. They live life as if they're never going to meet God. And it's vitally important for you, my dear unsaved friend, now listen to me, to number your days. Because the certainty of your life is this, your life's coming to an end just the way mine's coming to an end. Do you remember the rich farmer in Luke chapter 12? Man, he lived and he labored and he lived and he labored and he lived and he labored and he began to say, now what am I going to do? He says, look, if my barns aren't big enough, I'll have to pull this one down and I'll build this one over here and I'll put a big one over there. And what did God say to that man? God didn't say, man, well done, you work hard. 
God didn't say to him, I have blessed you with bountiful harvest because, because you've worked and labored so much. You know what God had to say to that man? God had to say to that man, thou fool. Do you know why God called that man a fool? God called that man a fool because that f man, with that man, friends, didn't number his death. He said, he said that day, now I said to my soul, now eat and drink and be merry, for I have much led up for many years. God says you haven't many hours left. God called that man a fool. Now listen to me, love. It's only a fool who believes they're going to live forever. It's only a fool who goes through life without thinking about God. Now listen, friends, I want you to stop tonight. And I want you to start tonight numbering your days. Because every day you live is a day less. And every day you live is a day closer to the great eternity. Do you know tonight, my dear, you're seven days near hell and you were than this day last week? Do you hear that, sir? You're seven days near hell and you were when you sat in this church last week. It's a wise prayer to pray, friends. Teach us. Teach me to number my days. It brings before you tonight. And it brings before me tonight the certainty of life. It does. Do you see a prayer like that tonight? A prayer like that only doesn't only bring before you and brings before me tonight the certainty of life. Do you know what a prayer like that brings before us? It brings before us the brevity of life. What did James say in James 4 and verse 14? What is your life? It is but a vapor. Do you know what a vapor is? A vapor is something that is so easily snuffed out. Do you see your life tonight? Do you see my life? It's something that is easily snuffed out. It's just like a vapor. But then James goes on to say this, it is but a, a vapor. Now the next wee phrase says this, that appeareth for a little time. You see, that's the brevity of life. You know, when you get to my age, you start reminiscing plenty. And I'm only a young fella. Not so very long ago, I was up at my father's grave. And I was tending to it. And my mind began to be flooded with memories. There's a wee wall just where he's buried. And I sat in the wall and I just took a look at the just where he lays. And my mind went back many, many years. My mind went back to the time when he used to take me by the hand to the snooker club. He used to set me up onto the chair and put a cue in my hand and teach me how to hit the ball. Then I remember times when him and me and my brother Brian would have kicked football in our, lower, in our garden there at home. And he could send a ball flying. I remember the day when we played cricket with my father. All we had was an old mop bucket for a wicket. And I remember the day too when I put the ball through the kitchen window. Do you want to know something? It just seems like yesterday. I remember that day well because my mummy came out like a raging lion. She says, you must start walking the valley golly now to get no pain at last. 
but Daddy was my saviour that night. And then you get a wee bit older. And I remember the night he gave me a clipping. My father would have clipped you. Remember one night him taking me into the station when I was brought into the station. He didn't bring me in, but I was brought in, but he brought me into the kitchen. And he gave me what we would call the last rites. His toad and all the talking and my backside and all the listening. They call that nowadays police brutality. They do. But you know what they call it in our days? Knocking a wee bit of manners into you. And it didn't do me one button of harm. Mind you, them years went quick. And he's over three, two and a half years dead now. He'll be three years dead coming to the 4th of December. Where does time go? A wise prayer to pray. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. That's a prayer that brings before us the certainty of life, and it's a prayer that brings before us the brevity of life, and it's a prayer tonight that brings before us the necessity of life. Now, what's the necessity of life? Look at the end of my text, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. When you realize how short your time is, you need to start a plan your heart on the things that are wise, things that concerns eternity, things that concerns God. Because do you know what this psalm says? This psalm says in verse 8, Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Listen, this prayer brings before you the great necessity of your sins to be forgiven. Do you realize tonight that every sin that you've committed, no matter how little, no matter how large, every sin God knows about, and every sin brings you into judgment with God. There's a wee verse in Isaiah 38, and this is what it says. Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. That's why tonight, when you pray a prayer like that, Lord, teach us the number of our days, that means, friend, God begins to speak to us concerning the certainty of life, the brevity of life, and necessity of life. And here's the necessity tonight. The necessity is for you to get to Christ. Listen, your church can't take you to heaven. Your minister can't take you to heaven. Listen, this church can't take you to heaven, and I can't take you to heaven, but I want to point you to one who can. His name is Jesus. Because the Lord Jesus said tonight, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to Father but by me. And it doesn't matter whether he's a Protestant man, a Catholic man, a white man, or a black man. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And I want to finish tonight by this. I want to finish tonight by bringing you to Calvary's cross. Because on Calvary's cross he was taken. By wicked hands crucified, slain. Man done his worst that day because God offered his best that day. Because on the cross at Calvary, Jesus died for your sin and he died for mine. 
that we might be saved. Listen, friend, tonight. Start counting. Start numbering your days. They're fleeting rapidly. And tonight's the night you need to seek the Lord. It is time to seek the Lord. The Lord Jesus tonight is here. And he pleads with you to give him your heart. He wants to forgive you your sin. He wants to save your never dying soul. The Lord Jesus says, I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Friend, you don't want to go to hell. Come to Christ tonight, who died for you on that cross. Come tonight and live before it's forever. And I mean it, forever, too late. A wise prayer for sinners to pray. Teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to us unto wisdom. Will you get saved tonight? Will you come to Christ tonight, who alone must, who alone can, who alone will save? Let's bow in a wee word of prayer together. Now, friend, tonight, listen to me. If God was to give you the final date, of your number of days, wouldn't you get the queer shock tonight if today was to be your last day? See, the Bible tells us we're not to boast of ourselves tomorrow, for we know not what a day may bring forth. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Friend, tonight's the night you need to get this right before God. Tonight's the night you need to get right before God. And tonight's the night you need to trust Christ to be your Savior before it's too late. Lord, we pray for the closing moments of this meeting. That, Lord, Thou will take the divine issues and the eternal issues of this meeting and, Lord, give deciding grace. We pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to speak, stray, and save. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.